Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about using prefabs in Unity's Entity Component System. Specifically this time we're going to be talking about how to use them with an Entity Command Buffer. Now in the previous video that I made, I talked about how to use these with the Entity Manager and some of the considerations that we needed to make. And this video is basically a follow on to that one. Now I would recommend checking out that previous video if you haven't done so already, but just to do a quick recap on it, basically we were using the Entity Manager to spawn these prefab entities into our world and set the exact position that we wanted them to spawn um, at the same time that we were actually spawning them. Now, the issue is that we were running into is that when these entities would spawn with the Entity Manager, for one frame they would appear in their default position, and then the next frame in the world, and they would snap to where they were supposed to be, and then they'd live there for you know, the duration of the application. The reason this was happening is because although we were setting the translation component on the frame that we were spawning the entity, that initially was running after the transform system group, which basically copies the translation component into the local to world component, so Unity knows exactly where to render that object in the world. However, we were able to fix this issue by basically having our system that spawns these entities run before that transformation system group so everything gets updated in the proper order. So in today's video, we're gonna continue using this same system which is still updating before that transformation system group. However, as you'll see very quickly, we're going to run into that same issue right off the bat. So we're gonna be fixing that. And then I'm also gonna be showing you how to fix another common issue that stems from uh, using these prefabs, spawning them from an entity command buffer and that is how do we actually reference an entity that we're spawning using an entity command buffer um, because oftentimes we're going to want to queue up this entity to be instantiated however we may need a reference to it right away even though technically that entity isn't created yet so I'm gonna be showing you how we deal with that situation. And as per usual, all the code as well as project files featured in today's video will be available using the links down in the description below. So you can go ahead and download those and play around with this project to really experiment with how this is all set up and really get a good understanding of how this works. So I'm gonna be showing you how to instantiate entity prefabs using an entity command buffer. So you see that I've just created an entity command buffer using the end simulation entity command buffer system. So this means that this is the built-in entity command buffer that will play back towards the end of the frame here. So we'll just go down here and you'll see that when we press the S key, we'll go ahead and spawn an entity using the entity command buffer. Um, so basically we're just gonna go ahead and create the command buffer inside here. And then, you know, very similar to the entity manager, there is an instantiate method on the entity command buffer. Of course, we can just pass in the capsule prefab and do get a reference to that entity that we will be spawning. You know, very similar to before, we're just gonna go ahead and calculate a random position and use the entity command buffer to set the components of the new capsule to that new position. And then I'm just gonna do a debug.break to pause execution after we've spawned it. So anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and enter play mode. I'm gonna press the A key a couple times and spawn a few uh, entities in the world with the entity manager. Now let's press the S key and you'll see something interesting happens. You see that the entity um, actually spawns in the world in that initial prefab position, you know, not where we want it to be, not in that random position that we set. And then we'll go ahead and go to the next frame and you'll see that the um, you know, entity goes to that random position that we've now calculated. Uh, I don't have the laser pointing to it yet. We'll be getting to that in a moment. But now there's a very specific reason that this happens. And, you know, even though our system, it's again in the same system, so it is um, happening before the transform system group, well, we're actually not spawning the entity until later in the frame. We're not spawning the entity all the way until the end simulation entity command buffer runs, which runs well after the transform system group. So again, we could fix this by doing something a little bit hacky and setting the local to world component directly. Uh, but again, do not exactly recommend doing that. So we're not going to be doing that now. But what we're actually gonna do now is change this from the end simulation entity command buffer to the begin simulation entity command buffer system. So basically this queues up the changes for the next frame and then it's going to play them back during the next frame rather than the current frame. So actually what happens if we go ahead and enter play mode, I'm gonna go ahead and press the S key to spawn an entity, you'll see that the game has now paused. You see in our side, our dots hierarchy, we do not have that new turbo prefab yet. Remember, this is just the actual prefab. We don't have the um, you know, clone version of it. And again, we look all around in our world and it is not there. Now we go to the next frame and you'll see that the entity spawns right into the random position where it needs to be. 
we can uh, exit out of paused mode and continue running the game and it's just going to stay right there it's not going to snap to a different position or anything all right and so now i'll just press the s key a bunch of times and you'll see that they're basically just being spawned right away now it's really hard to notice that one frame delay even when i'm running the game at a 30 frames per second frame rate you know, it, it still seems pretty much instant that capsule is being spawned into the world. So, you know, it, it is a little bit of an issue that there is a one frame delay, but it's not so bad because the player doesn't actually notice it. So basically, again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be queuing up those changes to run during the begin simulation at the command buffer system. So it's actually going to instantiate the prefab into the world early on in the frame, set its translation so that when the transform system group comes around, it can properly update the local to world components. And we don't have that little glitch where the entity just, you know, appears in one spot and then the next frame it goes to its next spot. All right, so then for the final issue that I wanted to show you, let's go ahead and just literally take this exact same line, the set singleton um, for the last spawn capsule. We'll just go ahead and pass in the new capsule. Come back over to Unity. So I'm gonna press the A key. So we're gonna spawn, you know, a couple using the entity manager. You know, everything is all well and good until we go ahead and press the S key. You'll see that we do spawn the entity into the world. However, the laser is not pointing anywhere. And if we look over in the console, we just have a whole mess of error messages. And if we click on these, we can get a little bit more information about the error. It says all entities creating using the entity command buffer.create entity must be realized via playback. One of the entities is still deferred index equals negative one. So basically what that means is when we do this entity command buffer dot instantiate, getting a reference to that new capsule, it's actually basically going to create like a dummy entity and the index of this dummy entity is a value of negative one. Now, this is no problem for when we're doing entity command buffer operations on this new entity because, you know, basically the, you know, all the changes are being queued up and when that entity is actually, you know, instantiated inside the entity command buffer, we can go ahead and, you know, set components on it and do all those sorts of things. However, you see this set singleton, this is running on the main thread again before this new capsule is actually created so it is kind of this like what's known as a deferred entity with an index of negative one so this is not going to work now this is kind of a problem because you know a lot of times we are going to need to spawn entities um, using an entity command buffer and we're going to need to reference them from other entities or data components in our game so how exactly do we handle this the answer actually might surprise you we need to use a dynamic buffer so, you know, I did a pretty thorough video on dynamic buffers. So go check that out if you want a little bit more information on that. But basically I've just gone ahead and created this very simple dynamic buffer here. You'll see that it's just a, you know, I call this the spawned capsule buffer element. Um, implementing I buffer element data. And we just have one field for a public entity called value. So first things first in the on start running, we're just gonna go ahead and get a reference to the capsule spawner entity. And then we'll do an entity manager dot add buffer type of capsule spawn buffer element passing in the capsule spawner. So this basically just adds the dynamic buffer to the capsule spawner. So now what we're gonna do is an ecb dot append to buffer. So basically this is going to, um, when the entity command buffer plays back, it's going to add elements to this buffer that we have on this capsule spawner. So the first thing is that we're gonna pass in the capsule spawner entity. Now this is the entity that has the buffer that we're adding to. Next, we pass in the buffer element that we want to add. So we're just gonna do a new spawned capsule buffer element and and for the value, we'll pass in that new capsule. So again, this is that new capsule that has not been yet created, but when the entity command buffer plays back, this entity now will be a valid entity. So then we can basically have a reference to it inside this dynamic buffer. So let me kind of show you what happens if we go over to Unity and I spawn a bunch of these using the entity command buffer. Um, you'll see that we now have a bunch of these. So let's actually go over to the capsule spawner and you'll see that we now have um, this new spawn capsule buffer element. And you see that in here, we now have a bunch of these elements. And if we go in here, you'll see that it's set to the prefab for each one of these here. So basically it's just populating this buffer with all these prefabs that we're instantiating in the world. So now we actually need to do a quick follow on job that basically looks at the elements in that buffer and determines, you know, which is actually this last capsule so we can point the laser to it. So I've gone ahead and implemented this in an entities dot for each function. Of course, there are multiple ways of actually doing this. Um, but basically, we're going to be looking for anything with a dynamic buffer type of spawn capsule buffer element. 
which I've called cap buff. And then the last spawned capsule, um, which I've called last cap here. So what we're gonna do is if the capsule buffer is empty, we'll just go ahead and return. We don't need to proceed any further. Otherwise, if there are things in the buffer, let's just go ahead and uh, set the last cap value equal to the uh, cap buffer at cap buffer dot length minus one dot value. So this basically just gets the last thing in that buffer. And then finally, we're just gonna go ahead and clear out that buffer. Basically the reason that I'm doing this here is if there were you know some reason that we were to um, you know spawn multiple entities in a single frame, it would basically just get the final one of the buffer and then you know clear out the buffer. So it would only be pointing to uh, one entity. All right, so we'll go ahead and enter play mode. You'll see that we can still spawn with the A key just by uh, using the entity manager. And now when we press the S key, we can now spawn entities using the entity command buffer and the laser points to the correct location. So again, kind of a little bit of a weird workaround that you have to do in order to reference the entities that are spawned using an entity command buffer because, you know, again, at runtime, you know, before the entity command buffer executes, that entity is not yet valid. So there's no you know, real way that we can reference it. So we kind of have to do this little workaround where we basically you know, add these ones to some sort of a buffer and then we look at this buffer and basically determine what we want to do with them from there. So anyways, that is an overview about how to use prefabs in Unity's entity component system and some of the special considerations that we need to make when using them with an entity command buffer. As you can see, it's not really all that difficult, but it's kind of some weird things that you wouldn't expect right off the bat um, that you really just kind of need to consider as you're going forward. So anyways, I really do hope that you did find today's video helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and the data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.